I wanted to cover a topic here that uh, one of my most popular videos I get a question a lot of the time. Um, basically, when you have a power outage and you use some water and the power comes back on and then you don't have water and you want to know why that you now have power but you still don't have water. Now, typically in a situation um, where you've had a power outage, now the power's back on and you don't have water is because of this switch right here. Now, we have two identical setups here, but the switches are different and they're only different in one way. This little lever on the side of here makes this switch a low pressure cutoff switch. And what this does is once the pressure goes down below the on, once it drops below 30, it'll get down to about 25. What ends up happening is the contacts inside of here open. And the reason why they open <clears throat> is because there's no pressure on the system. Now, typically, a regular pressure switch, when there's no pressure on the system, the contacts are closed. So as soon as you get electricity to flow through it, the pump will then in turn run. One of these, I want to explain exactly how to start them. Because a lot of people seem to have um, an issue with getting them to work right. So if you look right here on the side, I, I took the liberty of... Uh, drawing it in with a sharpie so if you take this lever here and you flip it all the way up that is incorrect that is not in the on position that is actually in the locked off position when it's all the way down that's in the tripped position so in order to restart your system you have to hold this lever at roughly a 45 degree angle and I'm going to show you what the contacts do so we're going to push up on it and as we push up you see how it does that so you're going to push and hold it right there and you're going to hold it for a good 20 to 30 seconds long enough for the gauge to build all the way up to about 40 psi once it builds up to 40 psi you can slowly take your thumb off of it and and these contacts here they will stay closed and the reason why they stay closed is because you'll have water pressure on the inside of this nipple pushing up on the diaphragm that is inside of here that in turn pushes on this fulcrum against this spring which activates this little lever lever here just like so they both work identically it's except that this one has the ability to trip itself off just like a breaker would, uh, you know, electrical breaker in a, in a short circuit, you know, environment. This just does it me mechanically. So now that you know how to reset your pressure switch, you just go down, find your tank, and hold it. Give it about 20 to 30 seconds, and your system will work back to running. Now, if it doesn't, Feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section and I can help you uh, diagnose your situation. I know that every uh, every well system, pump system, tank setup, everything is can be different, but I'm going to say 85% are all going to be identical. Okay, so another quick topic on pressure switches. Now, this is also covered in one of my other videos. Now, if you don't have water, take your cover off. Use the corner of your cover right here. Go to your contacts, just like so, and flick them. Be very careful, because yours is going to have wires going to it, and all this is going to be hot. So you're going to want to use the insulated factor of the plastic uh, well cover here, and uh, or pressure switch cover, and you're going to want to do this. Now, the reason you're doing this, sometimes you'll get carbon buildup in here on these points, and it'll just be enough to prevent the flow of electricity from passing from one screw to another. It, the, these are very, very simple devices. If you're needing a little bit of guidance on how to wire it up, a really simple way is put your whites on one side and your blacks on another, or your blacks on this side and your whites on this side. As long as you keep colors side by side, you can't get it wrong. You can also do it 
three different ways you can wire it right and one way you can wire it wrong. If you wire it wrong, the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to pop the breaker. So don't worry about it. Um, if you are replacing your switch, just take a picture of it. I mean, we have so much technology nowadays. You take a quick picture of it. You might need to take a Sharpie and mark a wire or something like that or mark one, two, three, four, and then put them back in the order that they came off. It's very simple. Uh, just don't overthink it. Um, don't ever take a pressure switch apart or anything like that. These things are just throwaway. If, if you have to, go ahead and flick the contacts. You'll already know that either there's a bug in there, a lightning bug, an ant, whatever. Go ahead and go to the store, buy you a new switch, wait the weekend, and then go ahead and replace it out. When you replace it out, then you can address your tank and make sure that your tank's air pressure is, uh, is set for your switch. Now, another thing that I would like to reiterate is the age of your system is important to the functionality of it. So a typical lifespan of a bladder tank is only about 10 to 12 years. So if your system is already 10 years old, there's a couple things that you're going to want to do. Because you have no water, it, it's going to make sense to go ahead and check a few things. Now, all you really need is a simple pressure tester, just like you would test the pressure on your car tire. So we're going to take this, and we're going to go up here to the very top of your tank, and you have a nipple. That nipple, we're just going to put it in there, and right there we have 37.7. Now, the pressure is very important to the, the system. If you don't have enough in it, or if you press that and water comes out, the tank's bad. So the way these tanks work is the top two-thirds is filled with pressurized air, and below this seam here is a rubber bladder. There's basically a rubber balloon in the bottom of the tank, and the balloon is the only thing that swells up full of water, and then the pressurized air inside of this vessel is pushing against that balloon. And every time you open a sink the balloon slowly deflates because the air in the tank is pushing against it. The less air that you have inside of this tank means the less force against that bladder, against that balloon to push that water out. So it's very important to have the proper amount of air pressure in your tank to correlate with your switch. Now, there's three different style pressures for switches. There's a 2040, there's a 3050, and there is a 4060. Now I have the two most popular pressure sizes right here. Now, it's very simple to go by. This switch will cut on when the gauge reaches 30, and then when the gauge gets all the way up to 50, the switch will cut off, which means the pump will cut off. Now because this is a 3050 switch, the air pressure in the tank up top needs to be no more than 28 PSI. There's a, a, a rule of thumb. It can be somewhere between 25 and 28 because some people's air compressors, uh, their gauges or whatever may be off a little bit. So you're better to be under that number than over that number. If you say you bought a brand new tank, you forgot to check the air, and you start using it and you'll run out of water and then it'll magically come back on and you'll use it and then it'll dwindle down to nothing and then boom again, you have too much air in the tank for the size of the switch and you might just need to let some air out of the tank. So when you buy a switch from the store, take your old cover with you. You're gonna look inside of here and there's actually gonna be a label right there smack dab in the center of the screen, it says on off 3050. So that's how you know what size, what pressure um, switch that you have on your system. Most of the time I'm going to recommend you buy a 4060 just because it's the biggest pressure switch that you can buy and most systems I'm going to say uh, post 2000 is going to have a 4060 switch on it. Now if you've had someone, you know, come and, and mess with your system and the only switch that they had on their truck was a 3050, then that's what you're going to have. But you're not really going to notice a big pressure difference between a 3050 and a 4060. It's just not that big of a deal. Now, you come over here 
you've got a 40 60 pressure switch you look under it it's going to be the same thing it'll tell you right in the upper corner cut on at 40 cut off at 60. every switch cover will tell you what it is underneath the lid and it's it's best to just go ahead and if you're going to replace your switch it's best to just go ahead and buy the same pressure uh that you already have because the tank's air pressure is already set up for that now if you're having troubles it's very important if you're going to adjust the air pressure in your tank you need to understand this in order to do it you need to turn your well breaker off and you need to open a sink up until you drain all the water off the system and leave that sink open even though no water might be coming out leave the sink open then you're going to go down under your house and you're going to take the cap off the top of your tank and you're going to check your air pressure let's just say hypothetically you get 10 psi of air out of the old tank so then you're going to take an air compressor and you're going to go ahead and you're going to add air to your tank now if any water is trapped in your tank while you're adding air it's actually going to push it out of that sink it's going to push out any of the trapped water in the tank out of the faucet that you have open so it's very important to do that now once you get your system up to either 38 psi or 28 psi depending on what size switch you have then you're all set you're done adding air you check it you make sure it's not over overcharged and then put your cap back on it and put your pressure switch cover back on it and you can go ahead and turn the system uh, back on turn the well breaker back on and everything will be working right now sometimes when a tank is low and you add air to it you your first burst of water that comes out may be discolored and the reason why that is is you've had a tank that's been low on air and now you've filled it back up full of air so it will start the self-cleaning process when it's low on air it takes that bladder on the inside and it kind of folds it well then you'll take sediment and the sediment will get trapped in that fold now you've done aired your tank back up and the bladder can stretch and swell the way that it was designed to do any sediment or any buildup that was trapped inside of that bladder has now been released all in one go so maybe you want to open up a bathtub or something like that to flush it out you definitely don't want it going to your toilets or your washing machine strainers or anything like that typically it's not a large volume of grit or a large volume of sediment it's just a little bit but it's not anything to be worried about so i hope i covered what most people um, have asked a lot of questions very very popular question and i hope i've covered it in this video now if you have any other questions about well pumps or filters or installations or do-it-yourself guides um, go to my channel find the well pump Q&A playlist and there's three dozen videos all on well systems on my channel you can ask any question you want all my comments are live I'm there to help anybody and everybody I don't ask for anything in return um, there is a donation button in the drop box if you'd like to donate something for the amount of uh, information that, that I'm giving out uh, occasionally I will get a donation from people and I do appreciate it more than anybody ever realizes it um, I, I really look at my YouTube channel and all the help that I give people is kind of like a family community because I spend most of my Sunday answering questions and it's just it's very uplifting to talk to people and I'm gonna say 99.7 because that's what YouTube says my my rate is 99.7 positivity rate and uh, comments uh, replied to so almost 100% of my comments over a four-year period of doing this have been answered and 99.7 percent is positive so that's pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy about that um it just means that uh humanity is not lost There's... well i hope y'all enjoyed today's video um there's dozens more on my channel if you need any well help uh just you know go there thumb through the videos all well related and uh you might find one that <clears throat> is pertaining to your particular situation now um a question i've been asked in the past from videos that i've made is you know where do you where did you get this part or where did you get that part i buy my parts wholesale in bulk 
as you can tell, the pumps that I have. Now, if you're, I don't, I don't have an online store, and it's been something that has been going around in my head uh, for about the last six months. If you leave a comment, you need a piece, you need a part, you can't find it, you can get in touch with me. Uh, my PayPal information will be listed in the description below, and we can come up with, you know, a way to get you what you need. Uh, we can talk over the phone. I can, like, build you a system, whatever. Like, say you wanted a stainless steel pump fitting because you can't find anything but plastic. Or um, you needed a, a bushing. The only bushings you can get were PVC, and you wanted a metal one. There's just so many different scenarios that I could go over. And see, here's my drawer with the plastic ones. Um... I know I've had people ask me questions about these fittings here. If you need one of these, just go ahead and DM me and we can find a way to ship it to you, whatever the case may be. Um, I typically don't do this large scale. Um, I'm basically an installer. So if you need a part, you got a question, you just need professional advice, go ahead, shoot me a comment, shoot me an email. My email will be listed in the description below. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to reach 100,000 subscribers, and I'm hoping you can help a humble plumber out. Thank you all for watching.